Ah, the pandemic, a time in which the simplistic desire of working from home suddenly became everyone's own personal nightmare. Which is weird, considering that you wouldn't expect someone during this time to be fighting to the death for toilet paper while you were studying the effects of World War I. I got the last roll. What? I got the last roll. Okay. And when it comes to making a student film, you'd think that it shouldn't be too difficult to plan one out during a pandemic. But then you'd be wrong, since it is actually difficult to find the perfect cast, a safe location to film, and to write a good script, while spending half of that time sitting next to what, can I, what I can only describe as a hazard zone. I wasn't actually aware of those challenges until after my IB film teacher, Mr. Boswell over here, told us that our project would have to be a silent film, but since I had already finished everything, I figured I would give myself a head start. So after having found the perfect location for filming, I had to assemble the perfect cast to bring my script to life, which was difficult to plan out since picking which one of my friends to be in this film was like planning out my equivalent to the Suicide Squad. The first guy I managed to get was Alex who called me the second I told him about the project. Then there was Ben, who thought that this picture was somehow better than this one. Then there was Christian, who wanted to do it just for the fun of it, but in the end he canceled last minute, so I had to get Frederick instead. For the final role, I managed to get my brother George to play the part of the thief, even though I don't think he seemed to enjoy it all that much. So after getting the cast together, we started filming over at my local elementary school. This is where the film starts off, with my brother George dragging the somewhat heavy bag of money away. He then goes down towards the basketball court and leaves the money there. Things get serious when Alex finds the unattended bag, and where he eventually encounters Frederick's character, before running off. He then proceeds to run up the hill where we see Ben, being all innocent on a phone call. I only say innocent because Alex came out of nowhere and stole his bike. And this was all after only having punched him clean across the face. So in order to push the comedic effect, I had them do one of those Scooby-Doo back and forth movements before the chase begins to slow down after Alex ditches the bike to escape, to escape, and they eventually catch him in the end of the film. So after long hours of going through all that raw footage and going back and forth between places every night, I successfully managed to piece the film together and submit it right on time, which I can imagine made Mr. Boswell happy since... Well, until now, he had no idea what my poor nose had to go through during this whole process. 